Hello folks. Welcome to this new section where we are going to learn how to handle uncaught or leaked exceptions from threads. What is so special about handling exceptions in regards to threads? Some of you may ask. Well, it may come as a bit of surprise for those who are new to threads that uncaught exceptions that leak from threads cannot be caught directly. You don't believe me? Let me prove it to you. As always, to save time, I have a skeleton class here handling uncaught exceptions for every thread. This will be our main class. Let us create a task by the name of exception leaking task that obviously will leak an exception. As part of the run method, we will have only one line here. Why runtime exception? Why not some checked exception? Well, that is because the run method of runnable interface does not declare any checked exception. Therefore, we are forced to handle all the checked exceptions inside the run method only. You can think that we are calling some third party code from inside the run method and this runtime exception has leaked from there. We do not want our application to go down because of faulty code in some third party library. So it is essential that this runtime exception be handled. Let us try to handle it in our main class. Let us run a few instances of exception leaking task first without handling any exception. Running the class now. As expected, the console output shows us four runtime exceptions thrown by the four tasks. Note that with each exception, the stack trace also gives the name of the thread in which the exception occurred. Now, let us try to handle the exceptions by encapsulating the threads in a try catch block. I know that to catch four runtime exceptions, I must have encapsulated each individual thread in a try catch block. The way I have coded the try catch, it is hooked to catch the runtime exception in the first thread only. And the rest of the three threads may not even run if the exception occurs in the first thread and is caught by the catch block. But that is okay. If we are able to catch exception from one thread, we can easily change the code later to let all the threads run and also catch exceptions leaked from them. So running it again now. We still see a lot of stack traces. Four in fact. 
and nowhere do we see our caught exception message the exceptions have gone right through our try catch defenses there secondly we note that all the four threads have run we see their names too in the stack traces anyways this proves that exceptions in threads cannot be caught directly by using try catch java it seems is not without its surprises this is a dire situation so how do we handle those exceptions and stop them from killing our application well for that there is an inner, inner interface in the thread class called uncaught exception handler which we have to implement it has a single method uncaught exception that needs to be overridden it provides two parameters a thread object and a throwable so you know that what exception occurred in which thread now after implementing this interface what do we do with it how will the jvm know that we have implemented this interface so that it can call its uncaught exception method when a thread leaks an exception the answer is there are two te two techniques to make the jvm aware of our handler you can either use any one technique in your application or you can use both the techniques in combination too this gives us three ways to handle the exceptions in the current tutorial we will discuss the first way the first way is to set an instance of uncaught exception handler as the default handler for all the uncaught exceptions in all the threads across the application that is there is just a single instance of uncaught exception handler for the whole application this can be done by using the static set default uncaught exception handler method of the thread class obviously it takes a parameter of type uncaught exception handler so whenever an exception occurs in any thread in the application the jvm uses this handler to handle the exception let us see this technique in action to handle the exceptions we first need to have an implementation of uncaught exception handler let us create one by the name of thread exception handler so we have overridden the uncaught exception method here let us add a constructor to using this constructor we can give an id to each instance of this handler class let us add a default no args constructor to so that we can use it if we do not want to provide any id to the handler instance
and lastly let us also override the to string method to print the identity information of the handler instances This completes our handler implementation. Let us see how to let the JVM know of its existence now. Here I have created a new instance of thread exception handler and set it as the default exception handler for all the threads in the application by using set default uncaught exception handler method of the thread class. I have also provided an id default underscore handler to the handler instance. There is no need for the try catch block now so removing it. The main class is ready. Let us run it now. We do not see any stack trace in the console now. Instead, we see four messages that print the ID of the handlers and the names of the threads whose exceptions have been caught. Note that the ID of the handler is the same in all the four messages whereas there are four different names of the threads. This means that the same instance of thread exception handler was used by the JVM for all the threads which is as expected. So we have successfully saved our application from going down because of some faulty third party code. This completes the current tutorial. In the next tutorial we will learn another technique for handling thread exceptions whereby you can specify different exception handlers for different threads. Till then have a nice one and bye.